Sir. I didn't know, sir. Sir, I didn't know. It's all right, Benson. Last minute decision. Adelaide, good morning. Where's Victor gone? Victor? Victor, please do not pretend you are ignorant of where he is. Am I my cousin's keeper? I should be obliged if you would tell me where he has gone. I know what he's gone to do. Where has he gone? You have the advantage of me, my dear. I was expecting to walk over to Home Farm with him this morning. Have you no pity for us? You encouraged him into this nightmarish life. Pity for you, a summerly house with your lovely children, the love you have for each other. Where has he gone? I can see I am unwelcome. Some unwitting fault, I fear. I shall return to town and leave you in peace. Oh, Mrs. Watson, we have been missing well, you. Only, a, only another ten days. Yes. Morning, Holmes. I did ask me to comment on your new tie. <laughs> Quite heartless, Holmes. That woman is undoubtedly coming here. She's been staring up at this window for the past three minutes. Oh, I do wish she'd make up her mind. I could ask Mrs. Hudson to bring up an extra car. Handsome, isn't she? Who? Yeah. There's also something of importance to make her hesitate so long. A client. Three for the establishment, five in total. I hope it's worth it. Oh, anonymous was the word you used. Where we're going is as anonymous as you'll ever find. Every compartment has a curtain, even. No one will see you. Oh, good Lord, you're not taking these with you, are you? No. Oh, no, 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 no. May as well tear them up and drop them in the Thames. <laughs> Forty pounds. I'll, uh, I'll give you a receipt. Oh. Oh. Yeah. oh, that'll be our fair visit. Please do sit down.
this receipt, Gedgrave. What about it? Well, what are you playing at? We signed it Carter. You don't expect me to use my real name doing this sort of work, do you? Carter's my real name. I could have signed it anything. I've entrusted you with my real name, Mr. Savage. Please, don't complain. I need your help. I am... Anything you say here will, of course, be treated in the strictest confidence. We have kept the secrets of kings, madam. I am... my husband. My husband is a financier. You have heard of the Oxford and Lombard Bank? Yes. The chief shareholders are the Conyers? My husband's family on his mother's side. He is one of the directors. The job is well within his powers, only... Victor has found the work increasingly irksome. He entertains an ambition, you see, which none of his family would begin to understand. What is that? He wishes to be a poet. He has come to believe that opium heightens his powers, intensifies the evidence of his senses. This may be so temporarily, but as I'm sure you know, the effect only survives the first few times the drug is taken. That is so, is it not? Oh, yes, indeed. Addiction quickly follows, very often for life. The uh, infernal substance soon offers the addict nothing except relief from the terrible effects of its absence. I believe Victor stands on the threshold of addiction. He left a note for me this morning which suggests he knows what danger he's in. <laughs> You are going? Well, clearly Dr. Watson is the person to consult in this matter. Uh, no, Mr. Holmes, no. There is much more to it than that. There is Mr. Calverton Smith. Calverton Smith? Victor's cousin. He has a malign influence. I am sure he has driven Victor to this. And I am certain he has done it for his own ends. On the corner. I do hope this is not a wild goose chase. How can it be? Well, I think you've had your head turned by a pretty woman. Thank you. Oh, yes. What about Culverton Smith? I looked him up. Culverton Smith did some important medical work while he was in the East. He pushed back the boundaries of science, however. He was obliged to publish his findings at his own expense. Why? He's an amateur, and the professionals are jealous. <laughs> well, I can see why he interests you. I don't want him at our table because he's a celebrity, my darling. It's just that he's horribly rich, or rather his wife is, and they bank with the Oxford and Lombard. Personally, I can't think of anything worse than hunting stories all through dinner. Nor I. 
So I persuaded a rather more interesting hunter to join us. Who is it? Don't tease, Addy. Sherlock Holmes. I say, that is something of a coup. Well done. Oh, look, Culverton Smith's here, too. I'm so glad he felt able to invite him again, Addy, darling. Look at him. Anyone would think somebody was his. I do dislike it. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Culverton Smith. Dear Adelaide promised me a surprise guest. I feared it might be somebody who was famous for being famous. Someone of your distinction I had not expected at all. Not I, one of yours. Mine. I make no claims to distinction, Mr. Holmes. You are too modest. Your account of the pathology of the Sumatran river fever is a masterpiece. Thank you. Thank you. For a lure to work, of course, you have to make the animal believe it's safe. Now, that's all very well. The animals involved, however, have a highly developed sense of danger. I'm sure Mr. Holmes must have that sense, too. Do you, Mr. Holmes? Yes. I see it. Yes. <laughs> 